Welcome everyone, in this presentation we are going to talk about closed kinematic chains also referred as uh, parallel robot manipulators namely after an overview of their advantages and applications we will briefly review recent results on the formulation of their equations of motion we will have the example of the rice planner delta robot as a test bed for the derivation of the mathematical model Finally, we present simulation results on MATLAB environment to illustrate the application of different control strategies for this class of dynamical systems. To begin with, recall that a serial kinematic chain consists of a series of links in a common arrangement, for example, robot arm. And basically, we distinct between two classes of kinematic chains. An open kinematic chain occurs when there is a an unattached link at the end of the serial chain and in this case the number of degrees of freedom is generally equal to the number of joint coordinates a closed kinematic chain occurs when the serial chain closes on itself which forms a sort of a loop and in such a case the number of degrees of freedom is reduced due to applied constraints among the advantages we can find for using those closed kinematic chains is that they become lighter in weight as a result of placing the actuators closer to the base. This will lead to uh, increased rigidity over weight ratios and uh, such a property is valuable in high-speed applications like flight simulator based on the steward platform, like carrying EVP loads, uh, medical robots and also rapid pick and place through times as an example the rice planner delta robot is a five bar linkage uh, designed and built at rice university as a test bed to perform experiments on parallel robots it has basically four links connected through revolute joints Two of these links are actuated with DC motors while the other two links are uh, just passive links. In this short video, a similar 5 by 5 bar linkage called a Dexter is presented to have a clear uh, idea about it. Well, the standard model for the dynamics of an open kinematic chain is given by the following set of ordinary differential equations. By this way, an explicit state space form can be easily used where the stability results for many control schemes are well established. Now these equations of motion have the following properties. First, the number of ordinary differential equations is equal to the number of degrees of freedom of the system. Second, all the elements are defined explicitly. And the domain of definition of the generalized coordinates is the whole n-dimensional real space. Along with these properties, other fundamental properties can be exploited to facilitate the control design. Among them we find the symmetry positive definiteness and boundedness of the inertia matrix D of Q. Second, the existence of an independent control input for each degree of freedom. Third, the linearity in the parameters. And fourth, the skew symmetry of D dot minus 2C for suitable choice of the C matrix. Unlike the case of open kinematic chains, the existence of loops gives rise to uh, algebraic constraint equations. Therefore, the dynamics of closed kinematic chains are described by differential algebraic equations, which are basically the combination of the two. And because algebraic equations are um, usually nonlinear, it is not in general possible to solve them explicitly in terms of state vectors. 
and this represents a major hurdle in their control since an explicit state space form is always preferred by most existing control strategies and therefore the rigorous stability is really rare differential algebraic equations are complex and hard to be solved analytically therefore they are commonly solved by numerical methods and the question is is it possible to use numerical methods of ordinary differential equations for solving differential algebraic equations well the idea is to produce an ordinary differential equation approximation of the whole differential algebraic equation and this can be achieved through repeated derivation of the algebraic equations with respect to time recall that the minimum number of differentiation steps required to transform an a differential algebraic equation to an ordinary differential equation is known as the index of the differential algebraic equation well let's do our model in fact the behavior of the n degrees of freedom closed kinematic chain is considered to be an n prime degrees of freedom holonomic free system on which uh, p holonomic constraints are imposed Q is the vector of the independent generalized coordinates of the constrained system and Q prime is the vector of the generalized coordinates of the free system. The system is confined to the following set where can constraints hold true. Well, in selecting our free system, uh, this in fact is basically obtained by cutting upon the loop and resulting on only open chains and since the activated chains uh, joints are joint 1 and 2 uh, this is the vector of the generalized coordinates Q and in our free system so the robot in fact is virtually cut open at the end of a vector and uh, the vector Q prime will represent the generalized coordinates vector of the uh, free system and in fact the constraint equations are due to uh, point F being coincident with the point E and are given by the following expression well this leads us to talk about the reduced model formulation and the main advantage of this formulation is that uh, the possibility of extending uh, from the existing control results in order to apply them to the closed kinematic chain so we can choose the independent generalized coordinates Q to satisfy the following twice continuously differentiable parameterization then the following quantities are defined to obtain the following singularly free uh, V prime set in fact which is the region where the constrained system satisfies the constraint and in addition is not in a singular configuration it is in fact often convenient to use a linear parameterization as a matrix that picks n components from Q prime now by combining this with the constraint equations and differentiating um, with respect to Q prime we obtain the following expressions using those obtained expressions we are now able to derive expressions for uh, D C and G from D prime C prime and G prime applying the implicit function theorem we conclude that it is possible to determine the uh, Q prime vector uniquely as a continuously differentiable function of Q we denote uh, omega prime uh, W prime as the larger subset of V prime for which this parameterization holds true 
and all the previous equations combined together are equivalent to the equations of motion of the reduced model expressed in the ter in terms of independent generalized coordinates q let's move to the control part in fact uh, this reduced model presents two challenges in the in its formulation first since this parameterization is an implicit function it follows that we need to compute it instantaneously in the control part which is really a difficult task to do second the reduced model is valid only in a compact part of the robot workspace and therefore it's difficult to implement a useful trajectory in such a way that the robot stays entirely within it which means that control strategies can only ensure local stability at best these difficulties in fact can be avoided uh, with the PD plus simple gravity compensation controller because the configuration G of Q desire these uh, yields some constant values it is computed offline and we selected KP and KV to be positive diagonal matrices with the following elements which are selected to take the system close to critically damped we choose the singularity free region where Q1 is between negative 150 and negative 90 uh, degrees and Q2 is between negative 160 and negative 100 degrees and the simulators, uh, simulated results are depicted on the following figure which show satisfactory agreement with the requirement this is the plot of the joint torques at the actuated coordinates uh, general coordinates another recent approach proposed to transform the differential algebraic equation system into a singularly perturbed uh, ordinary differential equation approximation the major idea consists of replacing the algebraic equations uh, with an artificially introduced fast dynamics characterized by a small perturbation parameter epsilon to facilitate the development of this singularly perturbed form Q prime is partitioned into two parts Q and Z as a step further we define W uh, we define uh, W to be an artificial state that represents the constraint error which dynamics are chosen to be asymptotically approached to zero using this approach we have partitioned our system into two subsystems the slow subsystem contains the activated joint variables Q while the second one represents the fast dynamics in terms of a single small parameter the advantages of this formulation are generally in two aspects the fast dynamics in the constraint error always vanish and dampen rapidly making the overall singular perturbed system uh, converge to the slow subsystem so therefore once a control law is divided to the singular perturbed module it will be an appropriate candidate for the control of the original differential algebraic equation system recall that u prime is the uh, domain satisfying constraints v prime is the non-singular domain and uh, w prime is the largest subset of v prime for which the parameterization holds true our reduced model is valid locally in a compact region which means that control strategies can only ensure local stability in best well the other major um, advantage of the singular performant formulation is that the domain of definition of the resulting model covers the entire singularity free workspace v prime for trajectory tracking we consider the non-adaptive version of the control law of slow tenantly where those quantities are expressed as follows the resultant closed loop system is given by the set of the, the three equations 
for the resulted closed loop system we choose the following layout on a function candidate where d1 and d2 are positive coefficients and v1 and v2 are uh, have the following expressions respectively recall the relation between the inertia matrix of the free system and the constrained system recall that d prime which represents the inertia matrix of open kinematic chains is uniformly bounded and since the generalized coordinates q prime in the singular perturbed model stay within a compact subset of the validity domain as a result d is uniformly bounded to well evaluating the time derivative of v along the trajectory of the closed loop system shows that v dot is decreasing over time hence the equilibrium of the closed loop system is locally asymptotically stable we choose the desired trajectory that makes the end effector follow a circle of diameter of 6 inch practically basically using the uh, inverse kinematics we have two solutions but the first one is going to be chosen this figure compare the desired and simulated data for epsilon uh, choose it to be equal 0 0.01 as it is shown here we included in an initial configuration error of q of the order of 2 degrees and we uh, remark that the overall simulated results agree with the desired data quite well meanwhile the constraint violation represented by w also goes rapidly to zero as t is going to infinity in this presentation a singularly perturbed model has been used for control design for closed kinematic chains and the control of the original differential algebraic equation system was transferred to the control of an artificially generated singular perturbed system and the dynamics of which converge to those of the original system when the perturbation parameter tends to zero the proposed method uses an ordinary differential equation solver to obtain the dependent coordinates the composite Lyapunov method is used to show that the closed loop system when controlled by typical control for open kinematic chains achieves asymptotic tracking we made simulations results on a parallel robot the rise planar delta robot and those simulations show how this method is practical and effective here we reach the uh, end of this presentation thank you very much for your attention and your questions are welcome